Today I'm going to be reading uh, Naked Morat Get Stressed by Mo Willems. Uh, it's a story from which you can learn a lot about persuasive writing if you know where to look. I'll read through it once, uh, and then I'll go back through it and talk about what you can learn about persuasive writing from the story. No shirt, no shoes, service. There's so much to learn about the fascinating little creatures known as naked morons. But for this story, you only need to know three things. One, they're a little bit rat. Two, they're a little bit mole. Three, they're all naked. Well, they were, with one exception. Well, the naked morat like to get dressed. Hello. When the other naked morat saw him, they said, Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Tonight we'll kind of go through it again and look at some of the things you can learn from it. So we started the story off, and uh, basically the whole society is uh, wearing uh, not wearing any clothes except for Wilbur. And the other Morat say, "Eee, yeah, what are you doing?" So what this will tell you about your audience. Your audience will be resistant to change and new ideas. In order to persuade someone, can you persuade anyone that already agrees with you? No, because they already agree with you. They've already been persuaded. Um, Persuasive writing <clears throat> focus on convincing those who disagree with you. That's what Wilbur has to do in the story. He has to convince these three naked morats who are very angry that clothes are an acceptable option. Um, so the first reason he gives is that when he wears clothes, he can kind of become anyone he wants to be. The clothes kind of make the morat in the story. And he's suggesting that he can take on different identities. Um, the problem with this is it's all focused on him. I uh, want to get dressed. I can be this, 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 or I can just be an astronaut. It's very self, self focused. It's focused on his own identity. Um, so what you want to do is he very successful with this argument? Not really. Right. Avoid arguments. centered around your needs. For instance, if you're arguing for a smoking man, you wouldn't want to say, well, I have to walk through the smoke. You'd say, students all over campus have to walk through smoke. Right? You'd want to focus on a broader spectrum than just yourself. So, when he makes his store, he becomes more uh, interested in what we call audience-based reasoning. Audience-based reasoning is uh, when you think about the needs of your audience and your audience's interests and base your arguments on those. He says the clothes are fun. Everyone likes to have fun, right? Um, clothes are warmer. You know, if you're Nick Morat, you can hibernate in the winter, you can go south or you can put on clothes. Um, and uh, clothes are on sale. So you'll probably be spending money you wouldn't have spent anyway, but at least you'll be saving some money in the long run. Um, so he's using the audience-based reasoning here to show them why it's in their best interest to try on clothes. And they bring them to Grandpa. Uh, uh, most arguments have uh, more than one side to them, but they're always going to have at least two sides. And you're always going to have opposition. 
people who agree with something and people who disagree with something. Uh, in this, opposition is represented by these three naked morons. And the argument they present is that grandpa is the most naked naked moron. And so, grandpa's nakedness represents the opposing argument. It's always important to talk about both sides of the argument in an essay. Um, a lot of students are picking up on that and including information on the opposing argument. But you don't simply want to present the opposing argument. If you just present the opposing argument, it looks like maybe you're giving an informational piece about both sides of the argument, rather than persuasive. It may look like you accept both sides of the argument equally or see uh, points in each of them. Uh, what Wilbur does when he responds to it is he says, yes, Grandpa did look heroic. Grandpa did look regal. But he would also look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. Um, so what he does is he gives what would be called a rebuttal. A rebuttal is um, when you argue against the opposing view. Uh, you don't only want to summarize the opposing view, but you also want to state why you disagree. Uh, lesson to take from this 
Yes, yes, the same which his grandpa approved. Uh, here he's in what we call making an appeal to authority. When you're making an appeal to authority, is what we're does here, it's important to appeal to authorities